Welcome to Pixels and Pints Podcast. I'm Bradley. I'm Michael. And we're two dudes talking about video games and drink. Speaking of pints, today I am drinking a uh, Martin House Brewing uh, Sour Ale called Hidden Dragon. Has some orange juice, dragon fruit, ginger. Delicious, man. Nice, nice. What about you? I got a blonde from No Label Brewery, the local brewery here in Katy, Texas. Nothing special. Wanted to stay light today because it's damn near 100 degrees outside. Yeah, it is. So, let's get into it. Yeah, we let's had go. we had a huge Nintendo Direct. Yeah. Maybe not exactly what people were expecting, but uh, a lot of exciting stuff happened this morning. And uh, let's jump into it. The first thing they they talked about was Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Basically, just a rehashing of what Capcom did uh, last week. Um, but you know, trying to hype it up. Uh, there is going to be a free update. Uh, next month in august no it's not next month it's a couple of months from now yeah pretty close to it pretty close to it so the uh the game is when is the game releasing uh it comes out in just a couple of days actually uh it does okay. july 3rd no june 30th um yeah you, have, you there's a dlc uh edition the day before which is some new armor and stuff like that and then the day after the game comes out and then um a month after that is when they will some somewhere around a month after that sometime in august is when the, the next big update was. okay yeah, yeah. the seeding I, basil seeding basil juice I, I call it beetle juice i call it beetle juice that's what i've been calling it beetle juice yeah. and then sometime after that is the lucent argic i'm glad you tried to pronounce it not yeah me. yeah wasn't a big wasn't a big fan of the way they named it but whatever yeah uh the next big uh announcement was near automata a big fucking game uh yeah. Like You're probably my favorite excited. fucking game, dude. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna buy it again, um, because it's got new costume, like a new mask. Don't really give a shit. Um, gonna be you know probably playing in 720, but uh, probably yeah, yeah, you know, nothing too crazy. Uh, pre-orders are already out at Square Enix. Um, it was 39.99 on the, on the store. They had a free T-shirt that came with it that sold out. Um, inside of the game. You get all of the old DLC. Like I said, you get some new stuff that is specific to the Nintendo Switch version. Uh, and then on the cover, you just have some alternative art that shows A2, which is the third protagonist of the game, um, who you get to play as later and fill out the yeah. rest of the story. But either way, I'm pretty excited. Can't wait for it to come. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not quite as excited about it, but um, just the fact that it's finally going to be available for the Switch. And there's going to be a physical edition. I'm about it, even if I'm not going to be probably uh, ripping at the, the the cellophane to play it. Oh, <laughs> I'm ready for my fourth playthrough. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, next we had, I said, Lorelei and Laser Eyes, right? Yeah. So this one was kind of weird. Um, very artistic, very... Um, very deliberate art style. It's, uh, it's from... It's from one of the from one of the publishers that are that are known for these type of games, Annapurna Interactive. Uh, it looks like it's a nonlinear adventure puzzle game. Looks like it's going to be a lot of mystery, a lot of puzzle solving, uh, trying to find, you know, key items and things like that, and then, you know, trying to trying to progress further into the story. Hmm. So that's cool. Fun stuff. Twenty twenty three. Um, probably will pick it up on a sale at some point. Yeah, I'll probably skip on that one. And I'm going to skip on the next one, too. Super Bomberman R2. I bought the first Bomberman the day that it came out on the Switch. Me too. Uh, it sucked. I hated it. Uh, this <laughs> one's coming out. It looks like the exact same game, except it supports 16-player co-op with the ability to build your own stages and share them. I thought the building yeah. and sharing is kind of cool. Um, I think that the, it's kind of neat that there's missions inside of the stages and stuff like that. Uh, they got the new castle mode, which is the 15v1. So everybody's trying to get to your shit and you're trying to like set up traps and blow them up. Um, then, like I said, there's the map create. So I, I think that there's, you know, a lot, a lot more gameplay in this one than there was in the one that released with the switch, but I it, don't know. It does look like it. Yeah. I'm not, I, I got burned cause I bought the first one too. Yeah. And it was pretty garbage. It so played so bad. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yep. Easy skip. <laughs> Yeah, well, is what about Mega Man Battle Net Battle Network Legacy Collection? I haven't played any of those uh games yet. Me either. Um but they announced this one today too. And 
no joke, two weeks ago, I went through uh, Amazon, eBay, and a bunch of other sites. I started putting all of these Battle Network games in a cart, and I was like, this is so They're expensive. Kind of expensive, right? They're super yeah. fucking expensive. Some of them been, are a lot cheaper than the others. And I was like, man, they have to release this as a collection. And I removed them all from my cart again, just two weeks ago. And then boom, here Jeez. these motherfuckers are all 10 of them, dude. Kind of excited. Uh, they're all pretty decent games. I remember picking on this kid named Mark in college because he played them all the time. I'd be like, <laughs> fucking Mark, you're such a nerd, dude. I can't believe you play this dumb shit. Looking back, Mark, uh, sorry about that. You knew exactly what the fuck these games look. So, so out of all the 10, so the thing mm-hmm. that, the thing that kind of, I'm curious about, cause I, I'm not into the series is it looks like they have like a Pokemon thing going. Yep. Yeah. So it looks like, uh, so you, looks like you have duplicates of uh battle network three, four, five, and six. Cause yep. they all have two different versions apparently. Yep. Uh, and the story I think was the same, but you just had like different power ups or something like that. Maybe the story was different. Fuck. I don't know. Uh, I just remember looking at the gameplay and being like, this looks really weak. Uh, but then I got, I got really into those types of games and I was like, Oh, this looks really fucking watching the speed. It looks like it's play gonna, it. Yeah. Made it. It, it looks like it's going to be fun. Uh, yeah. the, so the thing is, is like, it, it looks like they're going to be a little weird with the, with the eShop, uh, release on this. Oh, so yeah. it's coming out next year, but apparently it's going to be available in two separate digital packages that you could purchase, I guess. Yeah. So that's the way so, they did it with, um, the Mega Man Legacy uh x and mega man oh, legacy because yeah. they came out in two parts in the same some of the other legacy collections that they've done so that you can buy the first half or you can buy the second half because not everybody likes mega man one two and three right they might just like seven eight nine gotcha so i'll be curious uh so i actually had the i think one of the switch collections for the mega man i think it was the xz collection or something like that i ZX, ended, up, I ended yeah. up getting rid of yeah whatever it was i ended up getting rid of it um but apparently it's like it's super popular on the Switch. Yeah. And uh, I might just go back and just do a, a another purchase of it. You like should. A, if, like it's the, if it's the Zero collection, uh, that one was considered like one of the hardest of the side-scrolling, like all Mega Man side-scrolling. But it was one of the harder ones of the Mega Man series where you just play a Zero. It's more RPG-like. Um, the issue with that one was it was very punishing. Like if you died in the middle of a fucking stage, like you just, you lost all your progress. Oof. Um, so in the new one, you have well, on the switch, you have like, uh, essentially save states that the game picks up for you when you transition okay. into a new area. Um, there's checkpoints and shit like that. And I think you take less damage because in the original, you got hit like times and you're fucking dead. Awesome. Well, I think I'm, I think I might go back and revisit all these, uh, Mega Man collections that Capcom's released over the, over the lifetime of the switch. So yeah, I think I'll check it out. Yeah. And then we got another fucking B release remake thing coming out with uh, Pac Man World uh, Repack, which was a PS1 game. <clears throat> yep. So apparently it is a full remake of the original PS1 game Pac Man World. So, yay! I guess if you're if you were really into it, uh, it's I get, it's probably a decent platformer, especially if you're nostalgic if you grew up during the the original PS1 uh, time frame. So, yay for them. Yeah. And uh, Bandai Namco has already released a hundred and twenty dollar edition that includes this crazy like noir Pac-Man statue that includes a matching in-game costume. So I guess if you're into that kind of thing, Pac-Man noir, Pac-Man I mean, noir, yeah. And then you know, speaking of noir, man, we got black and white game. It's not really necessarily noir, but you know, Blanc the puzzle platformer where you play as either a wolf or a fawn looks like they're two little friends and they're trying to make it through this wintry landscape you can play local or online co-op um looks cute uh the art style is neat comes out uh in the winter february 2023 yeah the um the art style is very is very kind of like pencil hand-drawn type thing I, I'm not really a fan of these kind of puzzle platformers, especially like this co-op thing. But um, I think the art style is enough for me to to want to pick it up. So yeah, I'll probably I'll probably pick it up when it drops because it looks like he said it's beautiful. It yeah. is a beautiful looking game. It feels like you're playing like a uh, like a a child's fucking coloring book type of game or something, but with rougher yeah. edges instead of like. Yeah, um, it looks it looks really good. Looking forward to it. 
another throwback game coming out. <laughs> Return to Monkey Island. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know what type of I mean Monkey Islands are so, always puzzles, right? But like So the so the original uh Lucas Arts Lucas films, I mean, mm-hmm. uh Monkey Monkey Island games were basically point and click. These were like these were back I think in the in the late 80s, early 90s. Yep. Back in the day. So uh the the whole big thing about the return to Monkey Island is apparently this is the return of the original creator Ron Gilbert. Oh. So this is kind of like a supposed sequel to the the original secret of monkey island monkey island and monkey island 2 lechuck revenge game so super hyped if you're into kind of like a puzzle adventure uh type of game uh, i don't know if they're probably gonna expand a little bit on the point and click because originally it was basically you uh clicking on things you know in the map moving out to another map and then pointing and clicking and finding items and using those items to progress through the story so i'm pretty sure it's it's along the similar vein and uh, if you've been waiting for, I guess, the the next Monkey Island by Ron Gilbert, this is for you. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Ron Gilbert. I wasn't waiting on it. Might be another game that I skip. Me either. It looks Fuck really cool, Ron though. Gilbert. Jesus. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm also not excited about Mario Rabbids Sparks of Hope. Uh, they announced this over a year ago. We finally yeah. got a release date of o- October 20th. Um, yeah. I did see what was kind of neat is that you move around on a 3d world space, uh, like, like any other Mario game. Uh, and then once you an encounter an enemy, that's where you go into these, uh, strategy RPG battles like XCOM. Yeah. You didn't like it cause you're a piece of shit, dude, because the original Mario and rabbits was kind of amazing. What I've so, heard. So yeah, so it's it's similar 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 type of thing which you were saying. It's uh, basically you journey around on these maps, on like this kind of like overworld, and then you get to kind of just little sections where you go into like kind of battle formation. You know, each of the unique each of the characters have a unique way of moving across the map, uh, power ups, ways to attack, and things like that. And so it's essentially you. Uh, choosing the right type of characters for your play style and getting through the maps and, you know, getting to a, a boss at the end, upgrading your weapons and things like that. So um, Ubisoft is going to be talking more about this game tomorrow around 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I really enjoyed the first one. Um, it's really good, like as casual wise, like you can get through the story, not a problem. Oh, but OK. They do have like some very, very hard um kind of scenarios set up that you can play post game that were pretty brutal but if you're the kind of person who likes to like min max that kind of thing optimize your movements getting your people in the right place you know to you know flank flank the uh the enemy and things like that like mm-hmm. it's it's pretty decent and okay. it's relatively casual so it's not like super hardcore shit oh well, and then maybe i'll go back and play mario and rabbits i i do have a copy of it uh i mean it goes on oh. sale all the time so it picked does. it up a while yeah. back with the intention of playing it, but I was like, man, I really want to get into another SRP. I don't know. What I do want to get into, though, is Little Noah, Scion of Paradise. This shit looks like all of those games that uh, Square Enix came out with, like Bravely Default and stuff, same character art style. I honestly thought that that, that was their game, but it's not. It's from uh, Cry Games, who made the Grand Blue Fantasy uh, fighting game. Super cool looking game, really cool art style. Yeah. Um, this, uh, was announced today and it's, uh, it was on sale play, yes. ar- already for $15. Um, I went and tried to check out the, uh, channels, uh, videos of the game. Uh, and it, everything's locked, but like you can watch the video, you can't comment anything like that. They only have four videos up on the channel. So it kind of makes me a little worried about like how deep this game actually is, but I kind of don't care. Yeah. The combat looks cool as fuck. And, I yeah, you know, it, it it seems like it's just going to be, uh, you know, like these roguelite generated dungeons. Yeah, getting getting power ups and then kind of going through to, to kind of get to the end of the game. the The fifteen dollar price tag does make me think that maybe it's kind of on the um simpler side. Yeah, so it looks maybe simple. there's not a good like there's not a good chunk of meat in the game. And it might be just kind of like superficial and, you know, you kind of go through once you stop having fun, there's really nothing to kind of bring you back. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm worried about is like the replay- yeah. replayability, definitely in something that's a roguelite um, or or how how 
in depth as the combat get and stuff like that or you, for sure you know for running sure. around pressing so, the beep yeah I, i'm super into to roguelites like i've played binding of isaac so long i could put hundreds of hours into that game yeah. and the only reason why it keeps you going back is because just the synergies of the power-ups that you pick up you know the things that you unlock that force you to want to go through i don't want to say force it it really entices incentivizes you, you to yeah. yeah it entices you to keep going back over and over again and just getting a little bit further unlocking new and powerful items and just seeing you know what kind of destruction you know you can you can kind of re uh put on the things in front of you and i'm kind of concerned that this is probably not going to be that kind of thing it's going to be maybe a one and done type thing once you get to the end hopefully that's not the case but i guess we'll see yeah i guess we'll see I, i'm definitely going to pick it up um i mean at 15 dollars, like it'd be a waste to not pick it up definitely i enjoy the style yeah and then they were the next video that they showed was rail grade which is a management and economic simulation game i'm not gonna lie dude for for a while when i was younger one of the one of the things that i used to do is i used to download all of these old games and this reminds me of railroad tycoon yeah it was just a super game that i pirated because <laughs> i wasn't about to spend the money on it um but it's it's just one of those things just kind of like a sim city ish type game you know you're given a world you have to you know set up these set up these uh stations to mm -hmm. like haul um materials food people at some point um for the time and for the time that uh that it was like it was really simplistic i actually had some fun even though i don't really give a shit about uh trains or anything like that like it has <laughs> it has really no that that doesn't that's not a hook to keep yeah. me into the game it's just you know setting up setting up routes building you know uh, building train stations and just getting things from point A to point B and then, you know, just kind of optimizing it. And, you know, those, those little, those little nuggets of just like, Hey, you're doing good. Keep it up type of thing to, to keep you going back. And, and I, uh, I'm sure someone out here has a fucking dad boner for it though. Like the, the train nuts out here, the, that fucking guy that you see on TikTok who's always like screaming at trains and shit, that fucking blonde, <laughs> uh, British kid. Um, I, I think people like that are going to have a really, uh, I think they're going to have a good time and I might pick it up if it goes like on a deep sale. Yeah. Same. Uh, just to check it out. Yeah. I like simulation games like that. And I like when they're a little bit more macro, uh, instead of like exactly. this macro yeah. type of thing, like SimCity. Uh, the next game, which is a little bit weird to me, it reminded me of those old, uh, games where you, you, you write in like alligator and it would drop like an alligator or something on the screen. It was like side scrolling puzzle type of shit. So this is RPG time, the legend of right. Uh, so it's a hand-drawn RPG from this, this kid's point of view. He's trying to make a game right. and he's trying to draw his way through it. And you're having to draw and erase elements inside of the board to solve puzzles. Um, I don't know. It, it looks neat. I'd be in, like, you brought up an interesting point. I'd be interested to see if this is a little bit more like Scribble Knots. That's the type. one, Scribble Knots, dude. Yeah, it's a little Scribble Knots inspired where, you know, you get to use your imagination to kind of um, manifest, I guess, these things to kind of help you. Mm -hmm. um, Scribble Knots was okay, but it was super simplistic. Just like, you know, figure out a unique way to get the cat out of the tree. I, I'm uh, with this, it's a little bit more like RPG ish. So, yeah. I, I'd be more interested to see if there's uh, there that kind of scribble knots element, uh, and if that's the case, like I I might actually try it out. Otherwise, like it's not really my thing. Although yeah, I do it's, like it's the real art niche style, for sure. The art style again. There's a lot of like very cool art styles coming out from all the Nintendo partners inside of this uh, direct. So kind of inspiring, actually. Um, maybe not so much the next game, Sonic Frontiers. <laughs> This this video though, uh, in in comparison to the last two that came out, kind of had me hyped. So, and I think I think one of the reasons is because this is just like a little sizzle reel of all these different little snippets of gameplay. Mm -hmm. And what we've done is we've watched IGN just like creep around these open worlds and spend like two minutes trying to trying to you know get a coin. feed a, a, a 
bunch of balls, dude. Yeah. Like that's not that's not a that's not Sonic. No. You know, Sonic should be running around, you know, popping up in the air and just just bashing on these things and then going on his way. And this kind of it had uh, it kind of tried to show you a little bit of the, maybe the slower parts of it, but I think the way that it was cut. Um, it makes it look uh, a way more fast paced yep. and a way more interesting. There yeah. was, it showed you a lot of different things. I think they did show you a little bit of the, uh, I think the little worlds that you're able to kind of find and uh, enter in, like in some yeah. of the bigger open world spaces. Yeah. And then I don't, they had like I don't know if, one. yeah. Just like and I don't know VR. if you've seen that before. No, yeah. no, we haven't. They talked about it. They said that these are open, open maps. So not open right. world. So you go to a map and it's open. You do whatever you want to inside of that map. Uh, you finish it and then you even go to like a hub. Select your next world. Yeah, so it's it's it definitely it's a better showing. I, yeah, that's probably what they they this is what they should have been drip feeding us. Yeah, because um, some of these long form videos like did not make it look appetizing at all. No, but, no, not one bit. So this holiday season, it's coming out. So we'll see if. Uh, if they give us a little bit more uh, reason to actually want to play this. Yeah. I I'm, I'm more op- optimistic for, for this Sonic game than I am pessimistic. My view is changing over time. The more that better information. Uh, yeah. The next game I saw it and I was like, Oh my God, we got a kingdom heart spinoff. <laughs> Not really. It's Disney dreamlight Valley. Um, you, <laughs> I don't know. Game. No, this has been on my wish list. I think for the oh, past shit. the past year. Oh shit! You know, you've about... had insider knowledge. You've been insider working with Mark. All me and all of the people that love to go to Disneyland, you know, five times a year. Mm-hmm. Like we've been talking about this, and we're super excited. Not we're, really. Yeah, keep it real it, with your Disney adults, though. Yeah. So this is I, this kind of feels like it's it's uh, probably more of a Disney adult type of game mm-hmm. uh, features a lot of the characters, um, you know, the environments and things like that. Uh, so, I, you know, the maybe the the story itself slightly interesting, you know, it seems like there's something that comes in and kind of like ruins Disneyland Dis- or this dreamlight valley type yeah everybody loses their memories the landscape gets changed and it looks like you as a character positioned to kind of fix all those areas and return everybody's memory right bring life back to the disney dreamlight valley and if there was like some some high stakes over here where you know maybe some of the characters died or something like that or they they they're lost (laughs) in purgatory and, you know, they're going to be tortured forever until their souls are returned to their body. Yeah. Maybe that could be interesting, but it doesn't sound like it's going to be like that. And you're going to just follow through, go through some Disney shit. And, uh, yeah, good for you guys. There's your game, Disney Dreamlight yeah. Valley. And you can yeah. pick it up uh, September 6th in early access. So not even the early final access. version. Not oof. even the final version. Yeah, that's a oof. No, that's a big uh, oof right there. They're just trying to get it out, get people interested, I think, get feedback and have something mm-hmm. good by the holidays. Um, we got Live a Live, which was uh, announced earlier this year, um, a couple months ago, I think, or maybe just a month ago. Yep. Uh, we got a release date of July 22nd. It looks really good. It's the uh, cool pixel art stuff that they've been doing from Square Enix for uh, Octopath Traveler and Triangle Strategy. Uh, there's a demo that came out with the release today. Um, right. And then Nintendo Treehouse is doing something, right? Yeah, they did a 40-minute playthrough. Holy shit. Uh, yep. So I, I think it might have been just the demo. Uh, from what I can remember, I believe the demo includes like the first three chapters of the game, something yeah. like that. So the or whole the, the whole hook with uh, with Live Alive is the uh, just the number of characters and just kind of like the unique backstories that these characters are. So basically you have um, kind of unique gameplay elements. Uh, based on each of the individual stories and it I, it should be coming together somehow some way okay so i never played the original uh japanese version on the snes uh i they used to be really big into like emulation and playing you know translated jrpgs uh it was one of those it was one of those games that were was highly recommended uh back in the day and it's probably just as good uh okay. using the remake um Aesthetic. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to so be I'm dope. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm I'm hella yeah. looking forward to it. This the Me the too. whole concept is, you know, obviously very similar to the 
the eight game, whatever the heck it, that's called again. Octopath um, Traveler. Oct- Octopath Traveler. Uh, it's very similar to that and like um, Saga Frontier and all that shit. Mm-hmm. Games that I really enjoy. So it'd be cool to go back and see like, you know, what started all this shit. Uh, exactly. After that, we got a weird mashup of two different types of things. We got farming simulation like Harvest Moon mixed with Dora. Doramon. Doramon. So like two different fucking weird groups like Mario and Rabbids. But <laughs> I don't know where I the think, connection here is. I uh, think this is the second this is the second story of seasons game, I believe. Yeah, it is. So I I, I don't know much about it. Um apparently I guess if you're if you're into like those those old school like Japanese uh characters like Doramon or something like that, it's probably up your alley and you're probably gonna play it just to just a just a farm and and have fun or whatever but yeah it's it's definitely it, for somebody it's definitely, definitely for someone for it's not yeah not for me at all yeah. either i'm gonna <clears throat> skip out on it uh plus like these fucking farming simulation games are coming out like so Hand many fists it's nuts right uh we got another uh game in the minecraft uh style i don't know uh minecraft legends comes out later this year looks really fucking cool uh yeah. I don't know much the, about was it. Is this the strategy game? No, I I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just everything that I see of Minecraft Legends looks really fucking cool. Great. Uh, I'm not. Um, I'm not into the kind of the games that have come around the whole Minecraft thing, but this one, this one looks like it's it's going to be interesting. I think it's an action strategy game. Yeah. So it, it's definitely action. Yeah. So I'm kind of interested in just the aesthetic itself. Mm -hmm. Um, not so much the Minecraft world or anything like that, but if they turn it into kind of like an interesting gameplay loop, like action strategy, um, I might go with it. Like it's, it's going to be a lot more focused than just the, you know, uh, get dropped in and, you know, survive and build and build and build some stuff. Yeah. So this one looks like it's going to have like actual gameplay. Um, so if it, if it is like a decent strategy game, I might check it out at some point, maybe not on the switch. But, you know, someplace where I can get it on a on a huge, a huge discount or something like that. Yeah. Uh, next game, Dragon Quest Treasures got announced. Uh, that looked fucking phenomenal. It is a looter, like a go out, find loot, get treasure. You entice monsters to join your team. And then when you yeah. encounter other monsters, yours come out and fight and you get to join them. You get to pull out your sword and shield or your magic or whatever type of uh, player character that you are, I guess. And uh, kind of engage the enemies with it. Are you? Are you? I'm pumped. Are you pumped for this one, dude? Fucking Dragon Quest, Dragon Warrior One was the first RPG I ever played. Oh shit! I played it for the NES. I love, and so like I'm super big into the slimes, the drakies that I saw, the Dragon Lord statue mm-hmm. that they had in the in the Dragon Quest Treasures uh, trailer. It just, it's. It, it feels like a just giant love letter to the whole Dragon Quest mm-hmm. series with all of the the monsters and and just like the um, just the references and things like that. So I'm super pumped about it. I I I'm just hoping there's a little bit more to it. It does seem like there is like a base building aspect. So, you know, you go out, you find treasure, you build up your base so you can go out to find more treasure, you know, yeah. maybe level up your your monsters that you're hanging out with. I mean, this um, could be like a, a gameplay loop like Moonlighter, where you're just really a fucking vendor in a town, but to like get wares, you're going out like going into dungeons and killing motherfuckers and bringing those wares back to sell. Yeah. Um. So I'm it could be some lie. shit like that. Yeah. If it if it's if it's like if it has like a co op aspect, just let me know, dude. And we'll fucking we'll I'm in. Out there. We'll, I'm in. That we'll shit looks some, so we'll good. Beat some shit up and get some treasure, bro. Well, it comes out so. December 9th, so we'll, we can play it during the holidays. How about that? Yeah. Sounds great, man. Uh, after that, they did like a fucking sizzle reel, which caught me mm-hmm. off guard. Like they were throwing out, it was like boom, 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 back to back games. The first one that came up was Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes, which is another Muso fucking game from with the Fire Emblem's uh, characters. Um, I'm gonna no skip Man's it. Sky. Yeah, yeah, No Man's Sky. The fucking oh god, the Switch version of that. I think it's gonna be dope. Um, if you haven't played it, No Man's Sky's had like a lot of fucking updates. The the game actually yeah, looks I really good. I, I, f- I definitely did follow a lot of the drama that <laughs> that came with it back in the day. Yeah. Um. So I'm kind of interested to see what it's what it's like now. Uh. And and like you, I'm gonna skip the Fire Emblem Warriors series. Like I think I played 
what the last one I played was uh, probably the Hyrule Warriors. Yep. And I think I'm good. I think I'm good. I am warriored out. Yeah. So, um, yeah, whatever with that. Um, then they, man, fucking cloud versions. Dude. A Plague Tale Requiem. So I guess if your if your Switch is probably the only thing uh, that you have to play games on, I guess it's a good thing if you want to play the new Plague Tale game. So good, good for the people who want to use um, their Switch to play a uh, a modern game that probably couldn't come out on the Switch otherwise. Yep. But I'm probably gonna skip that for sure. Yeah, I'm gonna skip it too. I think there's uh, better places to play a Plague's Tale. Again, it's cool that it's coming out. It really sucks that yeah. it's a cloud version. You can pick that up on October 8th. We have um, Captain Velvet Meteor, the Jump Plus Dimensions. No idea what the fuck this is. Uh, they showed it. It looked like it had a neat art style. It looked like it might be a strategy RPG. I have no idea. It comes out in a couple of days on July 18th. Um, <laughs> look it up, I guess. <laughs> uh then they had another banger that just came that they're releasing, dude. Caught me off guard. Dude, the Portal Companion Collection. Yeah. I love Portal 1 and Portal 2. I love it. And, you know, the fact that they're actually just dropping it on the Switch for 20 bucks. Handcrafted for the Switch for 20 bucks. Yeah. Insane value for it. And the, the co-op dollars per game. Yeah. The co-op on the, yeah. portal two is fucking insane. So like having that on a switch is an absolute no brainer. For sure. Dude. I so good that when they, when they dropped the voice in that trailer, I was like, no, no <laughs> way, no way. Yeah. I thought maybe we were getting like a, a portal update just for switch and they were like doing some health drop, but, uh, you know, still, still cool. Uh, and in the vein of like everything else has been inside of this, uh, Nintendo direct, we got another, uh, Farming simulation game with yeah. Arvistella. Uh, it's a life sim RPG um, where it has like an open world map type of thing. If you're sim- if you're familiar with Breath of Fire three and Chrono Trigger, so you go from zone to zone like that. Uh, there's like some giant crisis, and because at first you're watching the trailer, yeah. you're just like, oh, it's farming, it's bullshit, and then they zoom out, and then it's like the Quietus is coming to kill everything, and like it's bringing monsters and shit. The battle looks dope the the quietest thing so this existential dread that's like killing all the land looks fucking dope if i it i've I, never I, played one on this one i've never played a farm simulator good. but i kind of want to fucking play this it looks good but my 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 feeling is that and the crazy thing is like this is a 60 dollars game from square yeah. right so <laughs> the art style is fine you know, if you're into thigh highs and thigh gaps, this is definitely <laughs> you don't even have to decide whether or not you want to play it. Drop the sixty dollars and do Just what you need to do. Yeah. I so know. what I can like what I envision might and the thing and the crazy thing about this, this would be a very like superficial type of gameplay loop is that you have the life sim part, the RPG, where you're going about your day, you know, you're you're farming, growing crops, you know, baking shit talking to the townspeople, probably running some quests for them, fetch quest. Maybe you're going out and you're killing some monsters in order to, you know, help you on the farm, help you to bake things. Yeah. You know what this is? my, what? This is Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. I doubt it. Dude, that's what this is. This is, this is the same fucking loop as Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. So my, my fear is, is that this whole quietest thing yeah. Is that this is the only thing really getting you to, to Leave continue the to do what you're do, supposed to be doing. Yep. So once Quietus hits the season of death or whatever, that through the through the you know start of the game, everything that you've been doing leads up to surviving the whole Quietus thing. And then after you survive, then it just goes back to just being a just normal ass RPG where you're just gonna keep farming, keep baking, keep until doing Quietus fetch comes quest. back. Maybe it comes back or maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Um, but this seems like a lot of these, like these styles of games. Like I used to be really, uh, really interested in these kind of like, uh, kind of like really weird offshoot kind of RPG ish. Yeah. Um, uh, like 
item shop selling games. Like I used to play Reciter. I think it was called Reciter. Reciter, like item shopkeeper or some shit like that mm-hmm. back in the day. And it was the same thing. Like the the whole thing is like you're in debt, kind of like you're into debt with Tom Nook or something like that. So you're in debt and you have to go out and fight monsters, find stuff to 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 return back from the battlefield to sell in your item shop and then to eventually pay back within a certain period of time. But after you do that, if you manage to actually finish and pay off your debt, then it's just like, well, I don't know, like just go out and fight more monsters, sell more stuff in your item shop. I guess like there's really nothing else for you to do. And I hope (laughs) that's not the case for 60 bucks. They, they better have like really like, you know, at least like 20, 30 hours of some compelling type of gameplay. But we'll see. We'll see. It's Square Enix. The the gameplay, uh, where at least the art style is really dope. The music's probably going to be really dope. Let's just let's just hope they actually give you a reason to want to stick around and keep playing it. Yeah. Well, damn. Uh, after that, like it was just again three back to back bangers. Uh, everybody's been anticipating these games. Yeah. I didn't expect us to get all three, honestly. Um, Persona Five I was Royal. With, yeah. I was shocked with Royal out yeah. of all of them. Yeah. I, I did not expect that at all. I expected maybe Persona 4 Golden coming out. I, Persona 3 Portable, though, caught me fucking off guard. Fully off guard. Um, I don't know. It, yeah, it's uh, the only thing, the only positive thing that I can see is that um, Persona, Persona 5 Royal does look like it's a native switch port. This is not like a cloud version or anything like that. So this is legit built for the Nintendo Switch. Damn. And so they are releasing a um a physical edition for mm-hmm. the Switch including the PS5 and the Xbox. So if you haven't played it yet, if you have it, if you don't have a fucking PS4, um then or even a PS3. This game originated on the PS3. So this has been around a while. Persona 5 has been around a while. So Yeah. Um, October 21st, Persona 5 Royal comes out for the Switch. If you need a portable, it's the place to go. Persona 4 Golden, and they still haven't talked about when they're going to drop Persona 4 Golden or Persona 3 Portable. So they're coming at some point. I think Persona 4 Golden, you can play it on this. You can play it on Steam if you have yep. uh, a gaming PC. Actually, you don't even need a gaming PC. I think just any decent PC is good enough to play Persona 4 Golden. But otherwise, because yeah, it was a PSP game. I right? believe wasn't it? Yeah, it was it a PSP like or that. PS Vita, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so it's long time coming. Um, they finally released it for the Xbox. Uh, well, they announced it a few uh, about a month back or so, a couple of weeks, and we've been waiting to see if they would actually announce it for the Switch. Persona Five Royal was kind of up in the air, but it is coming, and it is just like a native version. So, Persona Persona folks are going to be eating fucking good. Yeah, eating real good. You're getting all kinds of Persona games on the Switch lately. Uh, yeah. And that's that soon, man. That's October 21st, right before Halloween. October 21st. Yep. Yeah. So real soon. Like you yep. said, the other and ones, <laughs> four, and, 4 and 3. Uh, they did say at the start of the Switch uh, announcement, so the Nintendo Direct, that everything would be in the, the next 12 months. So we do have an idea that these oh, okay. are coming out in the next year from now. Uh, so hopefully okay. we see them, you know, before too long. Yeah. I the only the only thing that kind of bums me out is it looks like Persona 4 Golden and Persona 3 Portable are going to be digital only. I was yep. kind of hoping I was kind of hoping they would actually put it in like a collection or something like that. Yeah, we'll you have know, to check and see if like uh you know limited run or someplace like that gets a, a chance to print them physical or maybe like something from Play Asia. Hoping. Yeah. And, and then there uh, was a, I guess the last yeah, there was one. there was so this one is Japan only. So this oh. wasn't actually part of the American Direct. This was from Japan only. So they announced a game called Monster Rancher Kaiju. So I, I, I'm not familiar with the Monster Rancher series, but apparently this is just like if you're if you're somebody who's into like Ultraman and fucking Godzilla and things like that, um, it's a Monster Rancher game with the ability to fight Kaiju against each other if you're into that kind of thing. it's There's no word if it's going to come out uh, in the West or anything like that, but... Uh, if you have, it's super easy to set up a, J- a Japanese eShop account. Uh, that's coming out in sometime in 2022. So yep. if you're into Kaiju, if you're into Monster Rancher, it's get coming out an account on the Jap- Japan eShop. Yeah. And it's coming out right alongside, uh, 
Shin Ultraman, which was uh, is being created. It's a reboot film of the Ultraman series, really? created by the that. the creator of Evangelion, uh, Hideki Anno. So that's what this game is coming out for, in support of that uh, that remake. When I first saw the title, I was like, "Holy shit!" We got Monster Rancher coming out as giants, but that's not what it is. Um, <laughs> instead, this is uh, Ultra Kaiju Monster Farm. Uh, yeah, they're calling it. Yeah, I don't know. Seems neat. Too bad I won't get to yeah. play it. Me either. Yeah. And that that pretty much took care of uh, this partner partner showcase from yeah. Nintendo. Um. So, what do you think about it overall? Uh, I liked it. Uh, there were a lot of really really big highs in there for me. Uh, a lot of stinkers. Well, not not a lot, but a few stinkers. Um, I think the big takeaway from the show for me was the near automata drop. Wasn't expecting that. Wasn't expecting Mega Man Battle Legacy Collection. Completely got me pumped. And then the probably my uh my game that I'm gonna play immediately is Little Noah Scion of Paradise. Um those are my my top three I think for the direct. What about you? Yeah, so so the crazy thing is is like I heard somebody briefly mentioned near automata as far as just being a possibility of dropping yeah and it seemed super just out of left field um so i i i wasn't expecting it um but i had i had heard that it could potentially be there so i wasn't necessarily surprised i was actually surprised that it actually dropped that these people weren't full of shit yeah um so just having the having the physical edition come out i'm i don't see myself going through and replaying it again but I, I'm a fan of the series, so I'm probably just going to throw down the 40 bucks to get it from the Square Enix store yep. just to have my copy for the Switch uh, just to have with me. And hopefully we can find out more about Nier Automata or at least something in the Nier series uh, somewhere in the future. Uh, so that was cool. Uh, Blanc, I am super pumped oh, yeah. for Blanc. I really so. And the crazy thing about it is like as I've, as I've gotten older, like I've gotten away from like really hyped about like some of the big triple a games and some of the more like um you know action oriented style of uh of just releases and yeah. so blanc i'm looking into something that's like weird interesting it seems like you know you know like either the wolf's gonna die or like the <laughs> fawn is gonna die or something like it's gonna be super fucking sad and i want to be there 100 percent. i want to i want to shed a tear I want to yeah. feel something. You know what I mean? I feel you like know this what, is not going to end well. <laughs> no, it's not. And I feel like that's the big thing with third party developers. Uh, yes. They get a chance to kind of lean more into the emotional side of games to give you like a good experience. Like you would have it a, a long format movie or something. Right. Um, give you time to engage with the character. And Blanc, what, what catches me off guard is there's no words, no text. Yeah. You, they, you they did mention that. Yeah. yeah. It reminds me of Abzu, which is a game where you just Abzu, swim yeah, around. Yeah. You just swim around. There's no, and you just kind of experience the world, and then and then at the end you realize what the fuck is going on and who you are, and it it caught me off guard. I fucking cried at that game. Shit, I was like, so, shit. If that's if that's if that's up your alley, you should probably try Spirit Fair. Oh yeah 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 yeah. I thought about looking. Yeah. So I think Spirit Fair, like the whole it's the whole so thing old. about it is that you're trying to you're trying to help people transition into the afterlife or something yep. like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. It sounds yeah, it sounds super fucking intense. Um, so I definitely want to check that out. I think I have <laughs> uh my dumbass is I believe probably purchased like a physical edition of the game. And I, I tell myself like, uh, I'm gonna wait till I actually have the disc in hand before I play it. I'm probably not gonna play it for a while, but um I think this is kind of like it, this is kind of driven me into the into the point where I just want to explore like these type of games yeah. uh, more fully. And Blanc, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, Mario and Rabbits. I played the first one. I really enjoyed the first one. I'm not I really hate strategy like RPGs, <laughs> like these kind of style, like XCOM style where yeah. you have to like get your people in place. And then, you know, you have to like come up with a strategy so you can get through your turns without dying completely and stuff like that. I really hate it. But. Ubisoft has done a really good job, at least, you know, I, and you know what? I actually really enjoyed like the stupid humor of like the whole rabbits thing. So combining that with the Mario universe and they, they do a really good job of at least keeping it within, you know, 
plausibility that Nintendo could have potentially have created a, a game similar to this. It's very high quality. So I'm gonna, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, little Noah, I'm going to wait for you, man. Uh, so Little Noah, uh, I do love the roguelite. Uh, I'm not too sure if I'm going to get it right out the gate. So you'll have to let me know if, yeah. if it's going to be right up my alley. Um, and I might, I might play that, that motherfucker while I'm laying in bed tonight. <laughs> yeah. Keep, keep me up. Keep me up to date on what you think. Yeah. And outside of that, I think live alive for sure. Um, super into it. Uh, Dragon Quest Treasures. Super, super waiting for that. Yeah. Uh, Harvestella. I'm waiting for like the reviews to come out once that finally comes out on November 4th to see if if people are going to shit on it. Who knows? Yeah. And uh, honestly, for Persona, Persona, the whole Persona thing, I, I'll probably just play it on the. I'll probably keep it on PlayStation, man. Yeah, same. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna play it, I'm not, not super. I, I'm, I'm worried about trying to like invest myself in Persona games, because Persona Five, I think I've heard like, hundred hours, forty, fifty hours. If you do nothing but like story missions. Yeah. And then it's like 100, 120 if you want to do like all of the shit. Yep. I, think I, don't, you're, I don't know if I got time for that. I think you're looking 60, 80 hours just to do like character. In it. Uh, um, and then everything like that's in the 100, 100. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just what it's known for is being very. Yeah, that's true. The 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 fucking music is banging, though. So Yeah. God damn, the music's that. banging. <laughs> it's so, so good. I actually I've listened I've actually bought and listened to the soundtracks more than I've actually played the actual games. Holy fuck. <laughs> yeah. That's terrible. I actually bought, I actually have Persona 5 Royal uh, sitting in the back somewhere that I purchased only because it came with like a uh, a disc of like so- sound selections from the from the soundtrack. Holy and then shit. I actually bought, well, I don't remember, it was either, it only had one disc or it was actually like the three disc, like Damn. full soundtrack. So I'm really into the music. I... Well, maybe put, play it at some point in time. Who knows? Who knows? Well, yeah. but otherwise, it was great. It was a great direct. Yeah, it was. Great uh, job. I'm, yeah. I'm glad they put it out, even if it wasn't like a big one. Cool to yeah. see them supporting uh, all their third party partners uh, and, you know, bringing to light some of the, the cool shit that they're. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure they're going to come out with their first party stuff soon. There's definitely some stuff that they need to talk about uh, that we're waiting for. But um, yeah, they didn't even show Bayonetta Bayonetta concerned. 3 on this motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> I'm super upset. They, they they definitely need to. Yeah. But I mean outside of those those high profile games, they they actually introduced a few uh a few decent drops. So, you know, you could probably spend you know, like 50 60 bucks and get yourself like three or four quality indie games over here. So I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah. We're eating good, man. We're eating good. We're eating real good. Uh these past couple of weeks. Good to be a gamer, right? It it really is really is well thanks for hanging out uh thanks for doing this again here's right. to you with my empty ass glass uh, finished it Me up too. did you nice good job uh and thanks again for watching this episode of uh pixels and pints podcast again i'm bradley and i'm michael i'm just two old dudes playing video games and drinking pints man and drinking That's pints we do. drinking beers cool. beer caught me off guard a little bit i guess <laughs> maybe i'm a little <laughs> bit more dehydrated than i thought All right. See you guys. We'll we'll see you guys next time. Later, guys. Peace.